through the, the three, four weeks of camp that he has at Brown, what ways do you see Andy's 10 years of experience sort of showing up on a daily basis that tells you he's got 10 years of experience? <laughs> Specific things would be would be um, how he uses his cadence. Let's um, let's say there's a, a motion happening, and for whatever reason, uh, either the receiver was lined up originally f further away than uh, planned, or maybe someone else someone else was moving, so the receiver couldn't start the motion when we wanted him to because he's trying to make the, it legal. So now the motion is going to take a lot longer to get to where it had to be. And instead of that awkward silence, Andy would find some way to fill in the cadence with other things he could say to just kind of keep everybody calm, hang in your stance for a second. And here I go finishing the cadence. It's just a simple thing, but it allows you to still get off on the count as opposed to when something gets off in the timing and it, get, it looks sloppy because people are all getting off at a different time. So I mean, it's just a, it's a specific, simple way, but he really has been able to kind of master the cadence over time. And, and I think the other thing is uh, just how he handles situations. It uh, might be preparing for the bills and looking at their blitzes. And, well, here are the options I would have if I needed to audible against that blitz. Or, or uh, I've done it this other way in the past, but if that's, you know, I'm open to doing it that way too because – it's, I've seen it before, and I know there are a lot of ways to get it done. And so I think that brings a confidence to everyone when you're dealing with a guy who's, who's probably dealt with this issue before. Um, and so I, the, the way he uh, acts in the meeting when something comes up that, hey, this could happen, players see that to him, okay, I got a couple different options, and these are the things I would do. It kind of makes them feel good, like, okay, this guy's had, had to handle this before, and we'll be fine. Um, it's hard to it's hard to, for me to pick a most. I, I, I like I like the things I like about the preseason games is, is uh, for the for the guys who aren't the starters is just having the chance to see them play and for the young guys uh, there'll be there'll, there will be some unknown situation that comes up. You know we've we've obviously you're still in training camp so we spend a good portion of the week practicing against our defense and then you spend a certain amount of time prepping for the game uh and and you john DeFilippo is extremely thorough with them in the preparation so i know justin's prepped and, and i've seen how he's worked now since he's been here but something's going to happen that's unforeseen that, that'll be fun to watch how does he handle uh something that, that if, if I guess if I could have the example, I'd prep him for it. <laughs> was there an example from last week's game where he handled something like that? Well, um, I don't. I, I can't think of a specific one. Was it exciting to see everybody else excited? I mean, you had been in the stadium at home with fans, and sure. But I mean, just to see people kind of go nuts in a preseason game was that was there any part of that that was that was fun for you? Uh, I hope I hope we keep them doing that all year. <laughs> I guess that was my feelings. Like I hope I hope I hope we continue to hear this. You can't ride the ups and downs of the day to day with these kids, but Justin seemed to struggle a bit today, and I'm curious when that happens. How does he react? Is it uh, you know like anybody else, or does he get more intense, or how does he handle it? Uh, I think he's I think he he's pretty serious. So so the times when I've seen him. Um, uh, and when I say he's pretty serious, I mean, when he's out there and he's working and, and I think he's a competitor and I think he expects things to go well. Uh, so the, the, the times when I've seen him have to fight through that, what, what, I, what I've enjoyed is uh, the effort and the intensity that he keeps. So I think that to me that's that at some point that's going to be part of the whole process with him. It might be in a preseason game. It might be... Uh, wherever you know, it, it might be later down the road, but that that'll be that'll be part of of the growth. Is okay when things aren't going well. You know, you talk about having a short memory. Is he the kind of guy who comes over to you or Flip or, or Matt and Coach, tell me what's going wrong here, or does he just kind of get quiet and grind through it, or, or is there any change in his uh, the way he carries himself? Uh, I think I think he's I think he has a, a good. From the beginning, he has wanted to be coached the beginning 
so I, I've yet I haven't seen him in a position where that's changed. So I, I'm I'm again that hey maybe it happens Saturday, maybe it's the next week it, when he hits that those rough spots. That'll be that'll be part of of number one the evaluation of him, and then number two of his just continued growth. I mean, think about it. For him, I, I'm ass- assuming from what I know, unless someone was cheating, it, it was the first time on the sideline that he got to look at pictures of the NFL gets on the sideline. And, I mean, it just sounds like a little thing, but that's the first time in a live game where he's got to come to the sideline, sit down with the quarterback coach, and talk to the other players and the other quarterbacks and go through, hey, here's what it looked like pre-snap. That's when they rotated the safeties. Could you tell? I mean, that's a lot. It's a big change. And it, it allows you, if you use those pictures, it really allows you to, 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 to be coached and to coach and to work together and to advance and make adjustments in game. So that was really new for him. And, and, and um, or, or he, I mean, we've been doing it in practice, but hearing the coach talk to him in the headset, right? Other than practice, I mean, it's the first time on a game field. So all these things that are happening are new. And so it, it's kind of a fun process just watching him go through it. Is that an example, sorry, but I just, is that an example uh, when, when you try and explain to fans and some people why it's not automatic start of day one, <laughs> of the kind of thing that can make him better even though he's not playing and watching? Well, I, I don't know how to answer the question, but I'll, I'll, I will say I think sometimes when you talk, when you talk to people, they – not everyone realizes that the coach to quarterback radio is one way. You know, the coach can't, the quarterback can't talk back. Sometimes we're probably happy he can't. Um, and just little things like that. It's just, it's just different. And um, I, it, it seemed like everything went, went really well as far as how he handled that. I wasn't on the sideline, obviously, for the game, so I couldn't give you personal. You know, number one, uh, one-on-one, uh, first first-person feedback, but I think he's he's right on track. But don't, I guess I, what I'm saying is I don't underestimate all those little, all those things that may seem like little things. That's all part of the a big long process, which is going to be a, a a long fun journey. With, with Andy, you know, because he knows a lot of the nuances, and you know, Justin's still trying to learn. But specifically, Andy, what do you need to see or just want to see from him on Saturday? Well, I'd, I'd like to see our, our offense have more rhythm. You know, obviously we started the game slow. It took us a long time to get a first down. Um, that wasn't the way uh, we'd hoped we would come out. So uh, it's hard for me. You know, I, I'm not going to separate Andy from that. I mean, that that's, that's what our, our offense needs to come out and perform better and move the ball and score points earlier in the game. That would be my goal. So what I need to see, that's what I need to see. And Andy's going to do that for us. Because Andy's been around the league so long, you guys just, there's just this knowledge of him. I mean, is there anything that you do, like, need to see from him individually? You just kind of know what you're getting with him? I, I'm fairly confident I know what I'm getting, but I would like to see him play well. <laughs> so yes, both. Uh, you know, Andy and I, and I were talking about a time we'd been through this before in another preseason where we, we went into a game. It was a different situation, but, but for whatever reason, we went into a preseason game with a certain game plan. Not that we weren't trying to win, but sometimes you, you emphasize, hey, let's run the ball a lot today, let's do this a lot, you know, whatever. And so we went in, and, and it didn't work out real well, and it was a preseason game. And so we decided, hey, we're going to kind of, we need to get it going the next week. So we, Andy and I were, were talking about that specific week uh, a few, few years ago. So we, we've kind of gone through it before. Let's, I mean, we, let's, let's have the attitude that when Coach Nagy sends us on the field, it's with one purpose, which is to score a touchdown until he tells us to run out the clock. And so that's how we're going to approach the beginning of the game. Coach, there are some questions that you all have off the tackle that you're obviously working to answer those questions. The interior of your line, though, could be as solid as anybody's in the league. Are there some things that, that the interior of your line gives you the ability to schematically do some things to help on the outside, whether that's sliding or max protect or screen, wherever they may be? Uh, it, it is, it is uh, unfortunate right now we haven't been able to answer the tackle area like we would like to, so I agree with you. Uh, that's an obvious statement. Um, no, but hey, 
we're not complaining about it. This is where we are. And, and the positive is some of the guys who've been getting a lot of reps in training camp, it's going to help them whether they are long-term tackles or whether long-term they're actually guards. Some of the young guys have had to play in those spots. It's, it's going to help them be better players as we go. Uh, I do feel very good about the uh, Sam and Cody who've been able to get all the reps inside at, at center and guard, and I do think it makes us better, especially with, with Andy and Justin being new, that they, the communication that's happened. And we've had it happen multiple times in practice where we've had to meet offensively and talk about, hey, this came up in a blitz period against the defense, and we weren't on the same page. You know, whatever happened. I mean, there, even with, with guys who are doing really well in veteran, there's still kinks to work out with the communication. Um, I guess, I guess to answer your question specifically, because they're, they're, they're guys who've played and because we have a lot of confidence, it, it definitely works from inside out and makes things smoother. As far as can you help people, can you do this? I mean, that's kind of what they do every play. You know, every play they, they know where their help is and how much you give inside and outside. But because we've got some guys inside that are veteran and know what they're doing, it should work smoothly inside out. In your experience, how, how rare is it for a guy like Sam to be an undrafted free agent, like a year, year and a half develop into a guy who's pretty much an established starter? And what have been your impressions of him? And how, how high is the ceiling, would you say? My, my first impression of him was um, rookie camp, or the, the, the time when the rookies could come early last year because of COVID. I mean, maybe I'd seen him, I'd seen him on Zoom, but to see him in person and – in, in, uh, he was impressive from the from the first day he walked on the field because we had, you know, all of us were kind of new being together, and he stood out from the very beginning of how he worked and how he was uh, confident in his calls. I mean, there's, there's there's just a certain thing about a center when he's in control and he's confident, it it, it permeates. So really, from the very first day when just the rookies and quarterbacks could be here, it, it showed. I thought that was pretty impressive, and, and yeah, it, it's. I think his leadership and his knowledge and t his the way he took command helped us gain the momentum that we had. I think at, at at the end of the year last year, he was part of it for sure. So I, I no signs of that slowing down. Bill, what do you think that fast forward a month, we're in the regular season, Andy starting. What can Justin learn? from watching an 11th year guy prepare? What, what are the parts of preparation and routine and everything else that comes with game week that, that Justin will be able to take away from a backseat? Oh, I think, I think that's, I think what Justin will get is he'll get a view of, hey, here's how Andy goes through the, the whole week, whatever his schedule is, which is, is gonna be unique for how, kind of how Andy does it. And he'll, he'll match it with Coach Nagy's schedule for the whole team. And Justin will also see Nick's because don't don't. Nick also does a great job contributing in the in the meeting and talking through things. Uh, so he'll get a couple different views. We'll, obviously, as a group, we'll follow Andy's schedule, but Nick will also have input on in, in different ways to do it. And in the long run, at some point, Justin will make his own. You know, it'll be his schedule. Hey, I like to deal. I like this is how I like to study film on Monday or Tuesday, and this is you know some guys come in early to watch it, some guys stay late in the office, some guys take it home on their iPad or, or whatever setup they have at home, you know. So he'll he'll be taking all that in and trying it out and kind of feeling his way to okay, this is how I how I feel comfortable doing it. It'll it'll be know, knowing what I know of Justin and and how how willing he is to learn and to do what's necessary to really be great. I didn't say how, how, how much he wants to be great, but how willing he is to do what's necessary. That's, that's what Justin has, has shown me so far. Knowing that, I think he, he's, he's going to take a lot in and great time for him to, to figure it out. They all do. I, you know, I, I'm excited to watch it. Moving pieces you've had up front, the fact that your running backs can't be tackled in practice except for a few live periods here and there, and then the limited reps in the preseason, I guess with the one so far. I mean, what are you still looking to establish? What still needs to be done to make sure the identity of your running game is where it needs to be in, uh, by week one? I, I think I would, I, we we'd certainly would like, a, like to see 
us have some rhythm where you're making first downs with runs in this game. So, like, specifically, that, that's what I'd like to see. I'd like, I'd like to see us be able early in the game to run the ball for some first downs, whether that's two or five or, you know, I don't know if it's specific, but just that feel where we can hand the ball off and move the chains, which obviously we didn't early last week. So that, I, I think, what would you like to see? That's what you'd like to see. Day-to-day, the, -day, the specifics, what are we working on today? And what players are in here today? Dealing with that every single day, but I think it, when you talk about Saturday, let's make some first downs running the ball. Is the passing game easier to analyze on a day-to-day -day basis in training camp than the running game? Well, it's easier to watch and chart, but it isn't always. It still isn't always uh, game realistic because you can do seven on seven all day. But it gets different when you're out there, and now you have to deal with blitzes and pass rush and movement. So it, it's always. You know, you just have to keep perspective on this is practice, and certain drills are going to be harder for the offense, and certain drills are going to be harder for the defense, but easier for you. But that doesn't mean you scored seven touchdowns in that drill. It's just you worked on that part of the game at that moment, and you just put it all together. Um, I think we have a good gauge on where we are and what we'd like to see Saturday, and, and it won't go exactly as planned. It never does, but, but we'll get some of that accomplished be able to kind of re reconfigure what we need to see the next week. When you make that, dis oh, sorry. When you make that distinction between Justin want wanting to be great and willing to do the little things to be great, what are some of the things you've seen from the second one, some of the maybe the little details that we don't get to see that he does? Just I have evidence of, of how hard he's working at night on his own, preparing for the next day, mm -hmm. whether it be a text message from him or, or – um, just the, the extra time he's spending, just wa watching when we have some difficult play calls. When he walks in the huddle at, at you know at nine o'clock in the morning, I know from because I know how hard they are to, to some of those long calls. I know how hard he's worked at it. So he walks in the huddle in front of his teammates. He can all that thing like it's second nature to him. So I, I just have evidence that he's worked at it. So. What's the latest text message you've ever gotten from him? <laughs> oh, not too late. He's respectful. <laughs> <laughs> Thanks, Joe.